Before I begin, you need to know some things about me. My name is Kirk Downs. I am a 24-year-old male living in New York City and I work as a software engineer. Not many interesting things happen in my life. It's just the usual wake, go to work, come back home and go to sleep routine. Pretty boring, right? Well, something not so boring happened a few days ago and that's why I'm telling you this. A few days ago, while I was leaving for work, I saw a letter on my doorstep. I picked it up and there was no information about where it came from or who sent it. I thought that I'd read it after I sat in a taxi to go to my workplace. After doing so, I opened it. There was no name on it either, but contents of the letter were a little weird. It was labeled as a list of rules on the top. This is what it read. This letter is sent to you because you will need it. It is of the utmost importance that you don't throw this out and follow all the rules written on this paper correctly for the next seven days, and you might have a chance to make it out alive. Rule number one, before going out for work, take two rounds around your house. Rule number two, whatever you do, don't take the first taxi that approaches you, even if the driver says it's free of charge. Rule number three, at exactly 3 p.m., go to the highest floor of whatever building you're in and look out of a window for five minutes. Don't respond or react to any voices that you may hear. Rule number four, don't eat or drink anything from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. They could have put something into it. Rule number five. After arriving home, immediately lock all doors and windows so they don't come in to get you. Rule number six. At 10 p.m., close all the lights in your house and keep all the blinds open. They have the urge to see inside sometimes. Rule number seven. Don't answer any calls from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m., no matter who is calling. If the same person calls more than three times, answer the call, but don't say anything, no matter what the caller is saying. It will get bored after a while. Good luck, adventurer. We hope to not see you ever on the other side. At first, I thought some kids had decided to play a prank on me, so I didn't pay much of mind to it at first. Getting off at work, the driver said the ride was free of charge, though. That's weird, I thought. And then I remembered rule number two. Whatever you do, don't take the first taxi that approaches you, even if the driver says it's free of charge. What the hell? I mean, I didn't know this was the first taxi, so how could I be breaking the rules? I pulled out the letter from my bag to confirm that if that was the rule, and it was, okay, what am I going to do now? That's a huge coincidence. Nothing to be worried about as far as I'm concerned. I said these things to calm myself, but I was freaking out a little bit. I mean, that's pretty strange. I arrived to my work and got to my desk. After a while, when I was working, I forgot about the taxi and the letter. After lunch, I arrived back at my desk and I heard a loud thud from behind me. Everyone in the office looked at the source of the sound and there was a thing standing there. It was all black in color and its head nearly touched the ceiling. I then watched in horror as it picked up one of my colleagues from the ground and threw him out of the window of the building. Everyone started screaming as it started coming towards us and me. It picked up another one of my colleagues and tore her head off and blood gushed out everywhere. I stumbled backwards and ran away from it, this huge monster. I went to the upper floor and hid in a closet because I figured I couldn't run from it easily. I heard screams and cries for help from the floor below me. I pulled out my phone and tried to call someone, but there was no signal. Then, at one point, everything finally went quiet. I thought for a second that I was safe until I heard footsteps. And they weren't human footsteps either. That thing, that monster, was coming near me, coming for me. I put my hand on my mouth, tried not to make any sound, and 
from the gap beneath the door of the closet, I saw a shadow. The shadow of that thing. I almost screamed, but just as I was about to, the shadow was gone. I stayed in hiding for a few minutes before coming out, and I didn't see anyone. I slowly went down towards my desk, and then I saw everyone. Everyone was there. No blood was on the desks, no broken window. Even my colleagues who I saw dying were sitting at their desks, working. Everything appeared normal. Hey man, you okay? My friend Mark asked. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I think I'm fine, I said. I sat back on my desk trying to process what the hell I just saw. That's when my gaze went towards the clock on my computer. 3.16 p.m. Chills went down my entire body. It took some time to get to the closet, and I must have been in there for around 10 minutes, which means this thing could have come here at 3 p.m.? A dreadful realization came over me. I pulled out the letter and read Rule 3. At exactly 3 p.m., go to the highest floor of whatever building you're in and look out of the window for five minutes. Don't respond or react to any voices you might hear. Okay, well this meant that that thing that I just saw came here at 3 p.m. And that whatever is written in the letter, it's true. The rules are real. These rules in this letter are real. Whoever sent this to me knew this will happen and will keep happening for the next week. I could not take this. It was way too bizarre. And so I asked my boss to leave early and I immediately came home. This time I followed the rules and I locked all of the doors and the windows. I was hungry but decided not to eat anything until 7 o'clock came around. After that and a few hours passed, nothing really happened. I ate dinner and just chilled out until 10 p.m. came. I turned off all the lights and shut the blinds and then I didn't have anything to do so I just decided to go to sleep. Around 1 a.m. I was woken up by a thumping sound on my window. I got up to see what was causing it. I opened the blinds and there was nothing there. I was about to open the window but decided not to. Then suddenly, somebody started banging on the window. I fell backwards on the floor as there was still no one at the window. Or maybe I couldn't see who was up there. The window started to crack. Just when it was about to break, the thumping stopped. I got up and drenched in sweat. I knew that whatever happened, it was because I didn't follow the rules when I left for work. I looked at the rules again. I didn't follow Rule 1, Rule 2, Rule 3, and Rule 6. Fuck. Fuck, I've cursed myself. The blinds had to be open. I rushed through the entire house, opening all the blinds as fast as I could have. After that, I couldn't sleep. I stayed up the entire night until the sun came out, now knowing that I've broken at least four rules. I'm just not that familiar with these rules and now I don't know what will happen next. I went outside and examined the window. It had to be removed. I'll do it in a few days, I thought. After that, I ate some breakfast and took off for work. Of course, I followed all the rules this time today. I took two rounds around my house, didn't take the first taxi, went to the highest floor in the building and looked out the window for a little while. But the voices. Everyone was screaming in the building, calling me out for help but I didn't listen. I knew everything would be back to normal in five minutes, so I ignored it. Basically everything that I had to do, I did. But this night, I got a phone call from an unknown number. Following the last rule, I didn't pick it up. It rang another time and then it stopped. The next two days were pretty smooth. I did everything required and no calls came in the evenings. I was thinking that I'll make it out of this hell soon enough. But on the night of the fifth day, a phone call came again from an unknown number. It rang once, it rang twice. It rang three times. This time I had to pick it up. I answered and on the other end was... My mom. Kirk. Kirk, is that you? She said. It was so sweet hearing her voice again. It took everything I had for me to not speak to her. But I knew it wasn't her. It couldn't be. She had been dead for 14 years. Soon, she stopped speaking, and the call ended. I burst into tears that I was holding back from the fear that she would hear me. On the sixth day, I could hardly take it anymore. I had to know what was going on, so I denied all of the rules, 
Today, I didn't follow a single rule. I didn't take two rounds around my house before leaving, and after sitting in the first taxi, I asked the driver who he is, to which he didn't reply. I kept asking him, and at one point, I faded out. When I opened my eyes again, I was standing on the street beside my workplace, and the taxi was nowhere to be seen. I went in and still followed rule three. I was too scared to see that monster again. I ate a pizza at 6 p.m. and kept all the doors and windows open and didn't turn off any lights at 10 p.m. I knew I would regret it, but I just had to know what was going on, or I might turn crazy. At 1 a.m., the phone from the same number called again. I picked it up on the first ring right away. Kirk, Kirk, are you there? said my mother's shaky voice. Mom, is that you? I asked, eager for an answer. But after that, she didn't speak. I just heard heavy breathing from the other end. I cried while speaking, begging the voice to speak just one more time. The call cut off after a while. Immediately, after I heard a low voice coming from behind me, it was that black thing again, that monster hovering over me. I tried screaming out, but I couldn't. This thing wrapped itself around me and I couldn't do anything as it suffocated me. I woke up in my bed breathing heavily. I looked around me for that thing again, but it was nowhere. I walked out of the bedroom and out onto the street and again, nowhere. Actually, no one was there at all. I walked up to my neighbor's house and no one was in their house. I drove to my friend's house, my family's house, and no one was home either. I came back to my house and tried calling someone but there was no signal on my phone. Suddenly, I heard a low, animal-like sound behind me. I looked back and a creature of some sort attacked me. Thankfully, it was small, like a dog with rabbit ears, so I was able to kick it and get it away. But after that, another animal-like sound, then another, then another, and more and more sounds emerged from the darkness that was surrounding me. I then ran into my bedroom, closed the windows and doors and barricaded them with whatever I can. The strange thing is it's morning here, but it's utterly completely darkness now, and no one is around, and I can still hear the voices. I still hear those things outside. I only have a few hours left of my phone battery, so please, if anyone, someone, anyone can hear this, please, please come help me. I don't know what these rules are, and I feel like I have put myself in a terrible position now for not following them. So if you ever come across a list of creepypasta rules, do everything in your ability to do exactly as they say.